Before we dive into the episode, make sure you hit subscribe on the podcast platform you're listening on. Also, follow me on X at The Dave Dynasty and subscribe on YouTube by looking up Nostalgic Dave Dynasty. You can also buy one of my shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com slash The Dave Dynasty. Now, enjoy the show. Welcome to one hour of the toughest, roughest wrestling you'll ever see. That's right, Dick the Bruiser said it all. The big question, have you got the endurance? Have you got the brains to get past the excellence of execution? The reason why Axe and myself were put on this earth is to demolish people. Bobby Heenan, that is a very good looking sport coat you've got on. Yeah, and I paid for mine. Mine isn't government issue. Hello, everybody. Lance Ross and Dave Brown right along ringside. By golly, we're ready to go with another big week of championship wrestling. Greetings, wrestling fans, and welcome to Wrestling Nostalgia. I'm your host, Dave Dynasty. Thank you for joining us for another great episode. Today, I have guest John Nord on the show, also known to you all as Nord the Barbarian and the Berserker. We talk about Mid-South, AWA, WWE, the Berserker gimmick, and much, much more, so stick around for that. Guys, I apologize for no Sunday show this week. Uh, You know, I've just, I've got to catch up on my research for the AWA and Stampede shows, So there may not be a show every Sunday like I thought for the rest of the year, but there will be some Sunday episodes released in the future. But you always have the uh, the old good old Wednesday episodes coming out every week and then there will be some bonus episodes. So uh, just hang in there. There's some cool stuff. Got some stuff. It'll be out there. But until then, let's go ahead and just take a break and get right to it. All right. And when we come back, I will have my guest John Nord on the show. So stick around. Hey guys, Ray Russell here, curator of the WrestleCopia Podcast Network, inviting you guys to listen to many of the programs here as part of the WrestleCopia brand, including, but not limited to, the Wrestling Memory Grenade, currently covering the 1988 and the WWF project. You can also listen to the Regional Wrestling Podcast, where we talk the territories, whether it's Jamie Ward with Georgia 81, Roman Gomez with the UWF in 1986, or Gene Jackson covering Memphis in 85, Three projects going on right now over there at Regional Wrestling. You can also listen to the Wrestling Stoop with the legend himself, Bob Roop. Bob goes back in time each and every week, covering not just his career, but countless stories and interactions with hundreds of wrestling names spanning his two decades in the business. But that's not all. You can also check out the Puro Wrestling Academy with the professor of Puro Resu, Mr. Dan Ginnity. Dan and I go back in time and cover the history of Japanese professional wrestling in the English language. And you can listen to all of those shows and more, all part of the WrestleCopia Podcast Network, located over at WrestleCopia.com. That's WrestleCopia.com and anywhere your podcast streaming needs are met, from Apple to Spotify, Pocket Cast, and beyond. And while you're at it, why not subscribe to our social media guys for all the latest goings on here at the WrestleCopia Podcast Network. Plus, I'm constantly adding old school video clips and pictures from throughout wrestling history. You can follow us over on X, formerly Twitter, at Wrestling Grenade. That's at R-A-S-S-L-I-N Grenade. Also, follow and like me, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Grenade. And why not subscribe to YouTube.com slash Wrestling Grenade. So if you're looking to support that next up-and-coming podcast brand, please consider making it WrestleCopia. This is Listen to Their Screams, a horror podcast that feels like you're chatting with friends. Hello, I am one of your friends, Dave. I am one of the co-hosts of Listen to Their Screams with my friend Ike, and we want you to come and check us out. We are a fun-filled, positive horror movie podcast that does reviews, news birthdays anniversaries we play games we are a ton of fun every week for you the horror fan out there for all of our links to our social media and the podcast platforms just check out our link tree it is l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e slash listen to streams that is listen the number two and streams 
or look us up on your favorite social media platform and podcast provider. And welcome back to Wrestling Nostalgia. This time I'm being joined by the one and only John Nord, better known as Nord the Barbarian or the Berserker. John, how are you? I'm doing good. I got a little knee infection here. They want to damn near take my leg off, and I've been fighting it for nine months. So I'm in a big cast right now sitting in a oh. lazy boy chair. But uh I've had a lot of people call me and, and uh, you know, donate me a scooter and stuff. I got to give kudos to the Cauliflower Alley Club. They they literally just bought me a brand new scooter. So well, um, yeah, that's really nice. They're great people. And, yeah. Um, yeah. No, it's uh, and don't forget about Yukon John and that's right. All these other gimmicks, that's all right. These gimmicks. Man, yeah, but, we're, we're gonna talk about you done. You've done quite a few. <laughs> Yeah, I did. They added up quick. Yeah, yeah I bet. You know. Well, when you, you just don't know, but yeah. Well, well, when you started, you were trained by Eddie Sharkey, and um, no, well, I not really. No, not really. All right, Brad Rankins. Brad Rankins. Okay, I'm um, training. Although Eddie kind of got in on it because he wanted the do re me, <laughs> um, and uh, he just did. That's how Eddie gets, but. And it's just, well, I love Eddie. I love Eddie. But um, I really was by Brad. Eddie just kind of hung around. Yeah. Well, what was it like training with Brad Ringens, right? Former Olympian. Uh, tough guy. It was great. Great. I talked to him every day, actually. Yeah, still? And Brad, Brad is a, is a freak. He, he was, I remember when I was in high school, I was watching the 76 Olympics. Uh-huh. And he says, and uh, who was one of the commentators says, Dan Gable said Brad Rangles was the strongest wrestler he ever wrestled, you yeah, know. Man. And that's saying a lot. Yeah, absolutely. From Gable, you know. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, uh, Brad's a great guy. Great yeah. Guy. Uh, I'd, yeah. I'd love, I'd love to talk to Brad sometime and, and, uh, yeah. and everything else. But, uh, well, it, it, you went to Mid-South and you became known as just the Barbarian. And uh, you were yep. ma- managed by Skandar Akbar. Yep. Uh, what What'd you think of Akbar? Oh, I liked Akbar. He was a he was a he was a good guy. He was kind of he's kind of a crabby old guy, <laughs> but he was still a nice. He was still just good. He just a good dude. Um, but I, when I got to Mid South, Bern Ganya came to me one day. Well, my See, he was best friends with my father-in-law. So with Vern, I could do things like screw up and not get fired and all that. Um, but he sent me, he says, you're going down to Mid-South, Louisiana. And I said, well, what do you mean? I, I didn't even know what that meant. I, yeah. had, <laughs> I didn't know there was like nine, 12 territories or yeah. whatever. I didn't yeah. even know. Yeah. And uh, But I got there and Watts came up to me. And then Jake Roberts came up to me and he says, he looks like a barbarian. And, and <laughs> Jake, so Jake took me and uh, to a barber and had the barber shave my head in these streaks of hair on my head, you know. And uh, it was great because I was really good friends with Jake. And that was gamma for a whole year. It was me and Jake tagged up and then... Uh, we, we we just, Jake's a lot of fun, and uh, it was just, Mid-South was great, but you talk about the hardest territory, if you know a guy that you know what he's talking about, that he knows what he's talking about, the hardest territory without question was Mid-South. Well, yeah, I mean, you traveled 300 miles a day making 300 bucks a day. Yeah, you know? yeah. They always said those drives and, were terrible. Uh, it was unbelievable, and a lot of two laners. Yeah, so there's a lot of people getting killed on them Louisiana Bayou roads, you know. Yeah, and uh, that's just how it was back then. But but thankfully, none of us guys got it. You yeah. Know? What and how'd you get along with Bill Watts and working for him? I like Bill. Um, he kind of was a 
he, he back then, I mean, I know how it is. He, he kind of had a big ego, and he was a little bit, he was kind of a blowhard, actually. Yeah. But with saying that, is taking nothing. It's just, um, he kind of just, you know, he kind of, he made it feel like pro wrestling was like amateur wrestling. Mm, yeah. No, it's not the same, you know, and that's how Bill was. But one thing I will say about Bill Watts, he was good. He was good for wrestling. And uh, he knew it very well. He was a smart guy. And uh, I would say the only thing about guys that you think were real smart and were real successful, half the time you got to call the shit the way it is. Mm-hmm. They hurt people, they stepped on a lot of people, they had big egos, so let's not forget that, you yeah. know. M- morally, they were, a lot of the times, just not that moral of people. Yeah. And that's what always freaked me out, and I, I'm not saying I was, I wasn't, but it was just that, you know, just that stepping on people. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The four for the almighty dollar, you know. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and in 85, you won the, the Pro Wrestling Illustrated Rookie of the Year Award. And yeah. uh, at that time, what what was that like for you guys, uh, you know, the magazines and winning an award like that and everything? Did, did uh, I mean, I know, you know, it, not putting any more dollars in your paycheck, but was it kind of a, kind of a cool thing to have? Uh, it was kind of cool. I got to say, it was kind of cool. And I tell you what, I would go down – there was a gas station called Speedy Market, you know, and I, mm-hmm. I would go down there about three blocks from my house. I would check them magazines to see if I was on it. Yeah. And uh, I, when I got rookie there, I, I was pretty proud of that. Um, and uh, they gave me a plaque and yeah, uh, all that. But uh, I liked Bill Apter. He's such a nice guy and all that. And mm-hmm. it was kind of ahead of my thinking. I, I kind of went who cares you know? yeah <laughs> but that wasn't my it wasn't my ego i just you know the my i'd say the biggest thing that was my fault was i and i think if i was not, went a lot further it's just i i had a hard time uh because I knew I could always go sell cars at my dad's car lot and yeah. and on and on. So, but um, did I have fun and meet a bunch of great guys? Oh gosh, yes. Yeah. yeah, it was it was a blast. Yeah, it was just let's have fun. And of course, you know the guys I grew up with. Uh, yeah, Kurt Henning, Rick Rude, Mike Hedstrand, Tom Zink, Brady yeah. Boone. I mean, oh, these are all guys I knew since third grade. Yeah, you know? yeah. And yeah. that was cool because they were all just great, greatest guys you could ever know. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, and then you ended up you ended up back in the AWA, and that's where you kind of became known more as, as Nord the Barbarian. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, there you go. Yeah, and, and uh, there you were managed by Sheik Adnan El Cassie, Casey, and uh, yeah. And, they, uh, it's, you, you, I, you know, because of your character, I guess you always kind of had to have that manager, right? That guy talking for you because you weren't really, uh, yeah. supposed to be the, uh, no, no, <laughs> the speaker. No. <laughs> no, not really. It just, uh, I was just always felt wild and I just always wanted to have a good time on top of being wild. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we had, uh, Wrestle Rock in 87 and, uh, I think it was 87 and, we had this, they had it made up songs even for each guys. And I remember the Sheik's, the Sheik's a freak, and that's not funny. He's got his army and lots of money. You know? <laughs> so, uh, God, me and Henny would be just laughing so hard at these. And they, they were just, it was just fun. Yeah, and uh, well, when you were th- that early time in the AWA, you teamed some with Bruiser Brody, right? Yeah, and actually, me and Brody were main event against uh, uh, Greg Gagne and Snuka, uh, and then uh, I did the job, and uh, uh, then 
uh, he, Vern got five minutes in the cage with the Sheik. So that was the that was that program, and it uh, yeah, and and again, um, but even being with Frank and getting to know him, I had Brody liked me just very simply because. I really respected him, and I liked guys that were ex athletes and and all that. And uh, but he just liked me because I respected got him, and I was always uh, not letting my ego get carried away or nothing. I tried to keep it in check always, and uh, he liked that. But um, yeah, matter of fact. Uh, me and Frank sat there and had about a 12 pack each before we went out on the, on the match. You know? yeah. That's no BS either. So yeah. why? I don't know. You <laughs> can't drink a 12 pack of beer before you go out and wrestle in front of 20,000 people. Yeah. What is wrong with us? Yeah. Well, the, what was wrong with us was we, it was a, always a good time. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And, and Frank, Bruiser was a, he was a smart guy, right? I mean, he was a former Very smart, yeah, former reporter. I mean, you know, wrote, did some news work at yeah, the newspaper. San Antonio, yeah, yep, San Antonio. Yeah, Frank was a really smart guy. Um, he was uh, uh, really smart. The only time you could, the only time I got him a couple of times was. I just could drink a lot of beer and a lot of, and I, he would go out with me a couple of times and I got him so sick. He, he couldn't call me for a week. He said, brother, I was so sick. Well, God, I, I don't miss those hangovers, but, uh, yeah, Frank, Frank was a smart guy. And, uh, a lot of guys said he was a bully. You know, a few guys said he was a bully. He wasn't. He just called shit. When guys were in the locker room uh, acting like they're Hulk Hogan and they're and they're really they should be grateful they even got a job. Uh, you know, Frank could kind of let them have it. Not always, but he wasn't a bully. But like I know a few guys said he was. So. Yeah. Did he Did he ever have any issue with you? Because you guys had kind of a similar look, a similar style. Did he ever? No, I never had one issue once. Frank was, uh, I remember uh, Vern wanted me to be the barbarian and kind of do the Brody thing. And I'm waiting for Frank. I was with him in Japan when him and Snooka walked off the train in the famous tag team tournament. Uh-huh. They just went home instead of doing the job. So Frank, I went up to him at a ESPN taping. And I was kind of nervous he might be a little mad about me doing his gimmick. Um, but he said, hell no, brother. You are a good guy. And, you know, we're, we're, you know, you're my friend. Hell, anybody want me to do it, I want it to be you. It's a compliment to me, you know, and all yeah. that. So Yeah. Yeah, and when, when you worked in world class, where you were there, you were mentored to somebody, Gary Hart. And, uh, which, a well, little, I, I, yeah, it was different than Akbar or, or Al Casey. What was, what was Gary Hart like to work with as a manager? He, he was funny as hell. He, he had that talk, talk kind of, like, almost like an accent. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know what, what accent it was, but it was some kind. And he was funny. Um, uh, and he didn't take it terribly serious either. And, uh, uh, but he was just, all I remember is he was, Gary was a fun guy and uh, never never told me what to do. I never told him what to do. We just ad-libbed always. And, uh, but I remember once we were doing interviews for the Von Erichs and uh, Frank and Gary Hart was there and I says, hey, I got a, and I'm doing the interview, I says, I got a new name. For Kevin and Mike Von Eric, and I said their new names are Itsy and Bitsy. You know, <laughs> and they came up and said, "Brother, you don't say that. Don't say that. These guys own this place." I said, "Oops." Oh so, man, 
I well, remember that was kind of funny because I just, that's something I would do. I was just kind of like, like I wrestled Bill Watts once and I'm, I'm doing that leg drop and putting my ass or damn near on his head. And he would roll out of the way every time and he got up to me and go, I'm not going to take that leg drop. He crushed my head. I said, oh, sorry. I just didn't know. <laughs> That had, had to be quite a sight laying there on the mat, seeing a big John Nord going up in the air to drop that big lift. <laughs> yeah, um, well, uh, yeah. And Bill, of course, uh, I taught him as old then, but he's young. Go figure, 40 years ago. Yeah. But, yeah, but Bill treated me good. I had a problem because I just didn't want to stay in Louisiana. I had a new... My high school sweetheart, a beautiful little wife at home. Um, and we had a house. Uh, and every night I'm driving 300 miles going, what the hell am I doing in Louisiana? You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, it ended up learning where it really, you learn what pro wrestling is in, in Mid-South. The rest of the territories were easy compared to itself without question yeah well and, and then and late I, oh sorry go ahead i was gonna say i'm my, i'm not my best buddy there lynn denton the grappler and he's a great dude and uh and i'm just a great friend still so i met him oh well there you go yeah and later yeah. later when you returned you went back to the awa later late 80s yep this is mm-hmm. you, you mentioned yukon UConn John, and you were doing a, a lumberjack gimmick. Yep. Your team was Scott Norton as the UConn lumberjacks. Yep. So what? Yeah. <laughs> what? What? What made? How did that come up for you to to do the the, the lumberjack thing and and change they, your gimmick? Well, the the AWA, they were just in the same business, yeah. and uh, uh, you know, you go eighty seven, eighty eight, eighty nine. I'm going into Portland on Saturday nights working for, but in AWA, uh, they were just going like, "Be a, you look like I remember like be Yukon John, Greg." It tell me, I go, "Okay, let's let's try Yukon John," and I tried it, and something didn't feel right. I I, I looked kind of, you know, I wasn't even working out. I was going back to the car lot, but I was. You know, nevertheless, and that kind of took its course real quick. Then we were the Lumberjacks, me and Scotty Norton, who I've known since I was a kid. Scotty, another guy. Yeah. And I love Scott Norton. And um, this is when he first broke in. And he still gets mad when I said, hey, Flapjack Norton. <laughs> I was going to hey, ask you about that. <laughs> yeah, he said, eh, shut up. I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> I said, hey, Flapjack, did you really eat 278 pancakes? <laughs> Shut up. Shut the fuck up. And then you start chopping each other. And it's just I kind of got him on that, you know. And the interview just ended up crazy. And and all Scotty could say in the interview was, yeah, yeah I, I like them Flapjacks. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say you were you cut John, but at least they didn't call you Flapjack. <laughs> Could, yeah, right. Could have and been Scotty worse, I guess. Hates, yeah, Scotty just hates it too. Yeah. Oh, I bet. But but what a guy! What a great guy! It was just it was just. Uh, uh, but I tell you what, I loved I loved Vern Gagne. Um He has helped so many guys. He paid so many guys really well. You know, like, you know, Heenan and Mad Dog and Bachwinkle in those years. But those weren't my years. And and by the time I got there uh, in 84, the, the, the money was so bad that it was hard to get serious. Yeah. Yeah. Well, probably, I would say most people maybe remember you from your run in the WWE as the Berserker. And yep. uh, you went there in 91 and it had a good run. You were managed by Mr. Fuji. And uh, the, Correct. Yeah, that gimmick, it really wasn't that whole lot different than Nord the Barbarian. It wasn't. You know, not really. Not uh, really. Yeah. No. And that's Vince flew me in. And uh, 
Uh, actually, it started, I had a tryout for the movie uh, Suburban Commando, I think it was. Uh, oh, Elk. yeah. Uh-huh. And me and The Undertaker, who I knew from uh, Mid-South, actually, were sitting in the same lobby. We tried out for the part, you know, and we went in. There's a, the director's name was Burt Kennedy. He's a big-time director. He's a Hollywood guy. And I didn't even practice my lines or anything, but I, for being a heel, you got a six foot ten red haired guy that looks sicker than hell, <laughs> or you got a six foot five guy that really probably ain't weird look, you know. Yeah. And a, and I'm glad he did. It was no big deal, but. Uh, that's how I started with Vince. Then Vince brought me back the next day and said, what do you, uh, John uh, and Patterson were sitting there, Vince, and, and Patterson said, oh, John, uh, we hear that if you, we tell you to take a right, you take a left. <laughs> I said, yeah, I used to do that. I'm, those years are over now. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty wise. <laughs> I was just saying it gets you a job. But, Anyways, uh, he he says, well, what do you feel like? I said, I don't know. I just feel wild. But I just want to, and, and then he goes, how about a Viking? And yeah, so I went into this costume room they had. And it was amazing. It was like a Hollywood costume room almost. And picked out that stuff. And I was a Viking for the first couple matches. But here, go figure, some guy in Japan, believe it or not, had the Viking name trademarked. Oh, yeah. So I would have been the Viking, definitely the Viking for a long time. And Vince said, well, there's a form of a Viking called the Berserker. Let's <laughs> let's go with that. And I didn't really like that name, but I don't know. I guess I made enough money there for a couple, three years and all that, and uh, but I got to say kudos to Undertaker because when I tried to stab him with my sword, uh, well, first of all, they were having a hard time with Undertaker. They, he wasn't having what you call good matches because of his gimmick. He moved so slow. You got to be somebody that's bouncing off them or something, you yeah, know? Yeah. Because if you both move slow, it's the shit. Yeah. You know? Uh -huh. And so, and really in Japan, even Mark, I mean, no, I love Mark. We're, we're friends. Really good friends, actually. And he, he the, the Japanese just booed at him. You know? But they were not accepting of him. Later in his career, they accepted him because he was so over. But then I was, and they brought me in. They said, hey, who can you have a good match with? And the undertaker said, John Nord. And for that, him doing that, I'm eternally grateful for him because I got to do wrestle him every night for months and months, and my pay tripled. So he did me a great favor, and I'll always love him for that. Yeah. And yeah. when I tried to stab him, a lot of guys tell me, God, I didn't think wrestling was uh, real until I seen that sword stick in the ring. Yeah. Then I thought, <laughs> God, it's got to be real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so if, if someone saw you out in public, do they typically remember you as Nord the Barbarian or as the Berserker? Yeah, up in the Midwest, the barbar North the Barbarian. Yeah, okay. Anywhere else, especially the East, the Berserker. Uh, the Berserker. But it depends if they watched ESPN and in what age they are. Most of the time, if they were 5 to 10 years old, uh, back 40 years ago, um, they were watching ESPN and Vince. Yep, know? yep. And then as they got older, it was the Berserker. So, but, yeah interesting uh how it evolves you know yeah of course yeah and uh you did go to wcw for a little bit just wrestling under your name john nord and you had blonde yeah. blonde hair <laughs> yeah yeah what? yeah i went there 
Well, I, me and Barry Durso went up to the CNN tower and met with Eric Bischoff and it took about five minutes. He said, okay, you're both signed for 150000 each. We just went, yeah, baby. And <laughs> we didn't care. We're going to use your real names and this and that. And here was the point. I, 150000 was a lot of money. And I had a wife, three kids at home. Mm-hmm. Um, and I never hardly, they, they never, you hardly ever wrestled there. <laughs> yeah. So it was like free money. Yeah. Let me tell you, you probably wrestled maybe 34,000. The other 20 were free money. And you, and you, everybody, on it, let me tell you, everybody. But then he got into the click and Eric Bischoff, a weasel, little weasel, you know. Yeah. He really is. Yeah. And and uh, he he got into this click, and he let these guys like get into his brain. Yep. Scott Hall, Nash, and they just let me tell you, it was super successful, the NWO and all that. But boy, he got into them guys' heads, and they were. If, if you didn't want to keep your job, a lot of guys would be knocked out in the locker room. But we had to keep our jobs, yeah. you know? Yeah. What would I do, go home and say, yeah, I punched this guy out, and now I don't got a job on <laughs> Well, Well, when you were there, did they never never talk to you about maybe doing a gimmick, doing something a little more, doing something different? Yes, here's what happened. I was all set up for a really good push, and that's no BS. Yeah. But here's what happened. In Springfield, Missouri, I wrestled Hugh Morris. Uh-huh. And I went down on my neck and something twinged. Oh. I woke up. My left arm was three inches, two, three inches smaller than it was the day before. Oh. So now I got this injury right when they're ready to push me big. Yeah. And they were. And I'm shrinking and... I got a sweatshirt on in the locker room. I'm just trying to hide this. And yeah. remember Arn coming up to me going, I like the old John better works out. I'm like going, you dumbass. If you only knew <laughs> this was an injury instead of me not working. That's how ignorant guys can get. Any sport, any sport, if you get injured, your career takes an immediate turn. Yeah, yeah. For the bad, and I'm like, think, looking at Arn. God, you're stupid. <laughs> you know, you should be like, hey, brother, I see your nerve damage. Yeah. But should you hide it? Should we give him? I'm not a big guy, anyway. So I notice it, but um. God, I just, I just always felt that resentment of, you know, I could have stayed with my 22-inch arms and all that, and my body just started shutting off the fuse box. I always put up this, take a sledgehammer to a fuse box, open it up and see what's left working, you know. The living room don't work, the bathroom does work. And that's kind of where your body is when it gets nerve damage, yeah. right? Yeah. And that was always that was always hard on me. And I've talked to a lot of guys who've been through the same thing. You know, Brad Reynolds. Brad went through the same thing. I, his body started going and and, uh, and all that. But if you're fortunate enough where your body hung together and you're a good guy and you were you knew, you know, you know, Eric, um, I liked Eric. I mean, I knew Eric was trying. I knew he meant like he was doing his job the best he could. But then the arrogance came in and he starts telling people like Eric, well, this is all, of, tell him all about John North. You don't know about me. You were too dumb to even see I an injury. You thought I just quit working out. Sure, you bet. I just quit working out just right before a big push. You bet. <laughs> yeah. Did you that, know, did, and I, did I don't you... mean it, it does sound uh, resentful, but 
I truly am not. It's just, I call shit the way it is. Yeah. And Eric was, Eric kind of jacked a few guys and, and that, that helped him early in his career. Yeah. Like me and a couple other guys, Wayne <laughs> Bloom and a few other guys in the AWA helped him, you know? Yep. And, uh, he forgot. You know, he didn't forget any because he was a mark for him. Yeah. But he did forget a few guys. And Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Cause... Hell, I just seen him at the airport about a year ago. Yeah. And, you know, it was Thanksgiving Day. And he kind of got scared of me. <laughs> <laughs> we were going down the escalator. He said, hey, fish off. He turned around. I go, what are you doing, you little weasel? <laughs> and he got, he got scared. He yeah. Got, yeah, I was gonna say there's a lot of you, you guys, wanted... a lot of you guys from the AWA were there, you know, like you said, Bloom, Enos, and everything else, and he he didn't really do anything with you guys, and it's almost like he, uh, yeah. I don't know, like he had a had a little bit of a a bias against you guys from his past or something. I don't he, know. Well, he did, he did because he got brainwashed by Hall and Nash, and all. He got just he went into this fog of listening to them guys, you know, and we're like. Eric, you're one of our guys back home. We helped you, and now you're all about these guys and nothing about us. And uh, the only good thing I can say, though, is he did put me on 150 a year, and I didn't have to work. <laughs> so yeah. How much can I dislike the guy? I don't. But I call it the way he is. He is a kind of a, he is kind of a weasel. That's all right. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe... Maybe he needs a good paint brush. And, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, your health though you're are you you're now suffering from ALS? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I still got. I my body's not doing good. See, I got a the 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 ALS is hundred percent in control. What happened lately was I got an infection in my knee last December. Um. It put me down on the floor. I couldn't even move. I felt like I was paralyzed. And now I'm sitting here in a cast from my toe to my hip still for nine months. And if if they did five operations, and if I don't beat it, they want to take my leg. Mm. And that's freaky, serious, sad shit, you know. But yeah. a lot of people have suffered. A lot of people suffered a lot more than this, and um, I'm I'm just grateful to uh, to still be here and all the guys I know and um, his wife. Great. Well, I got the three best kids. I'm a little biased. Everybody says that, <laughs> but um, yeah, I just I just don't. I just gotta I just gotta take care of myself and try to save this leg. <laughs> Yeah. It's what? Serious. Yeah. And, and, but and a lot of people forget, right? When you think of these things, you know, there's that you think the physical stuff, the physical stuff, the physical stuff. There's a huge mental side, a mental stress to this that goes with with having injuries and, yes. and, and sicknesses and diseases. That's that's super impactful. But what what's it like for super. someone like you? I mean, you're a big guy, always been strong. You're an athlete. You know, you've, that's what you're known for. That's what you made a career out of. Uh, yeah. How yeah. hard is it, you know, when, I mean, it's got to be super, even more mentally impactful for, for someone, uh, an athlete, to experience something like that. It is. It is. It's, it's, uh, it's humbling. Mainly, too, is it really connects you back with God because all of a sudden now you're thinking, you know, I don't, I'm not without any guarantees of, being alive tomorrow, mm-hmm. you know, but it does back with the Lord and you, you get, that's the good thing out of it because you realize, man, I wish I could have seen this years ago. All I did was think about the surface things, you know, yeah. keggers and, <laughs> and friends and wives and, and, uh, wrestling and nothing but the, you miss the laughs. Yeah. The laughs are things you miss. But the the reality of it is is this life is so short and you got to know 
and believe something bigger than yourself, where you came from, why you're here, where you're going, and you just got it. Otherwise, you're a lost dude, man. Yeah. And uh, all I can do is, all you can do is pray for your boss. Because yeah. a lot of guys don't have a clue. Yeah. Well, like you said earlier, right? The Cauliflower Alley Club has helped you out with the scooter, so that you can have, you know can it be mobile. But but there's yeah, but there's still there's still a lot of medical expenses, right? Still lots of things, yeah. s- stuff yeah. you still got to do. Uh, so you you obviously you have a go yeah. a GoFundMe that's been set up to help you with these things. I'm gonna put a link in the show notes, but I want to make people people aware of that. If anything they can do to help you out uh, would would probably mean the world to you. To to uh, yeah, to and it does. It does, uh, because I'll tell you what, my son's in charge of it, and he's a hard ass, you know. <laughs> he makes sure any money, he makes sure any money goes goes to the medical part of it, or you know, and and that, and uh, you know, and I appreciate you so much having me on this show right sure, now. I mean, of course. just to bring that up is really nice, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's and, uh, one of the downsides to being, a, you know, a professional wrestler, right? You're Labeled an independent contractor, so there's no there's no retirements, there's no health benefits, there's no insurance, there's no none of that to help Not with these things. And, and when you're done, you're done, and you never know yeah. when you don't know when that day is. Most guys can say, "I'm gonna I'm gonna work till this, you know, 65," and but you don't you can't do that, and you don't know it could end early. It's uh exactly. So it's and you know about and you don't know about injuries. That's right. So it's you know it's it's crazy. I, I mean, remember when we were kids out of high school. I ran Jesse Ventura's gym. Mm. Now, Ventura played football at a junior college with my brother. Uh-huh. And my brother introduced him to his wife. Okay. Terry. Yeah. Anyways, I'll make it short. He goes, no, no. Hey, he goes, hey, Johnny, <laughs> I can put a move on you and eat an apple with the other hand and still pin you. <laughs> I said, no way. First of all, I can smoke you right away. So we go in his front yard, and I look up at the picture window where the living room is, and there's Terry watching us. Yeah. Wayne Bloom's with me. Ventura puts a leg in and puts his hip on kind of my body around my head. kind of hard to describe. Uh, almost like a guillotine type thing. And Wayne, and he says, all right, and we say, Wayne, all right, Wayne, when we say go, I go. All of a sudden, one, two, three, go. I just exploded and just picked, picked him up and stuck him to the grass. <laughs> and I looked up, and there was Terry, and she was like holding her hand over her eyes. He's going, oh, God. <laughs> But the reason I tell that sounds kind of egotistical. I don't mean it like that. But you got to know how things were back then. And guys, you, you, you just don't come up to a guy and tell him he can do something, you know. Yeah. And and you don't. It, it was just ridiculous. But listen, um, Jesse, we all hung out there at the, the original Ventura's gym. Hegstrand, Rude, uh, not so much Henning. He was already in Portland, and uh, and on and on. Simpson and uh, I graduated with Scott, and and he helped a, a lot of guys just by having the gym. Mm-hmm. So uh, as I get older, the more I appreciate Jesse and um, God. I just all these guys are just. I mean, they're really great dudes and. Um, I owe, I owe a lot of gratitude, and that's no bullshit, you know. And uh, now it's just kind of crazy because, I, you know, the doctor. This was two months ago. The doctor says, "Hey, this is the last operation. Then I got to amputate." I said, "What did you just say?" <laughs> you know? Can you imagine a doctor saying that to you? I know. Yeah, I know. No, and I just, it really freaked me out. I woke up, I, and the infection's still there. So right now I'm 50-50, so I don't know. Yeah. But, but um, I still like, I still like clowning around. Yeah. And I love telling these wrestling stories because when they're true, 
they just ring true. Like yep. like me calling Eric a weasel. Yeah. That's all I don't mean <laughs> I don't mean it maliciously. It's yep. just he just it was a little weaselly back then. Yep. Because he could be. You know? Yeah. But did a the NWAO was was a, was a phenomenon, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, you've, you've brought up a couple of times guys like Wayne Bloom and Mike Enos. Man, I was I was always a huge fan of theirs. I always thought they were such a great tag team, and uh, they were really underrated. Weren't yep. they? Yeah, they were. I always loved them, especially. I you know, I know they went on to that Beverly Brothers thing in the WWE, but man, I always liked that Destruction Crew thing when they were in the AWA. I always just thought, man, it just it just worked for them. They were just such badasses. They you know, should have stayed with the Destruction Crew. Yep, I agree. But, uh, I agree, and that's a good point you made because um, me and Wayne talk every day, and you know when uh, we say the same thing you just said, yeah, you know? and they were good because Wayne had come and go. I got this, Mike. Stop, you know, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> Mike wasn't a great interviewer. Yep, and uh, Wayne was a uh, was good, and he could really good and you could you know and just whatever it just worked like you said yeah and i want another hey another couple of pwi rookies of the year there one of them was i think they won it as a tag team i'm pretty sure they did win it as a tag team. yeah they did i don't know if what was ever, it 89 i think so i don't know if that's ever been done so. by uh, by another tag team that i know that i recall that's a that's uh, a, yeah it's a good point that's a really good point yeah i, I always like them like i that's said they're great. like you mentioned earlier there at the end you know the awa was struggling with lots of things, but they were definitely a bright spot yeah. there, and uh, they were good. And and uh, they got trained by Brad, so mm-hmm. that's why they were good. Yep, because Brad trained them. You just don't show up and be good like that nope. unless you were trained by somebody that knew what they were talking about. And Brad knows what he's talking about. If you went to Brad Rankin's stamp, you had a stamp of approval with the rest of the country. Yep. You know? Yep. Well, he, and he had a run there in the late AWA also there with, uh, with Camp Patera as tag champs. So he got a, he did. He got a little bit there. There's another team. injury thing. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. You know, Brad, Brad, and me went and, um, he said, I can't keep, I can't do it. So they gave, they never even, actually they never had a match. Yeah. So they gave yeah. the, the tag team titles to them guys. Yep. And, uh, uh, but nothing, you know, Wayne and Mike are, Wayne and I've known since I've been 17. He's in, I talk to him almost every day. But anyways, um, yeah, it was, uh, uh, it was just too bad that Vern was so pig, you know, bullheaded. Yeah. And, uh, but he was an icon and whatever the reason, uh, uh, it, I think it was just too hard to fight that much money with that many people out east. You know? Yeah. Yep. Here absolutely. we are in the Midwest, right? Yep. And you know, you got Podunkville, Iowa, Minnesota, <laughs> South Dakota. There yep. just ain't enough ammunition to beat the big machine. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I don't know what it was there though in that Minnesota area though. It must have been something in the water there for for a few years because the. The the, uh, the the wrestlers you guys were turning out <laughs> at that time <laughs> around Robins yeah. R- Robinsdale and all that, but they were just coming through like crazy, and they became the biggest names in the business. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, and thanks for saying that because Robinsdale is near and dear to my heart. They they they, they I still look uh, close to there, and and Robinsdale, yeah, we all. It might have been something in the water tower. I don't know. And then you also got the University of Minnesota. Yep. Yep. We had national champions, uh, Brock Lesnar, a guy named Cole Conrad, was just an animal. Won the nationals twice. Uh, you had uh, uh, Tony Nelson, another animal, won that nationals twice or three times. And they're all heavyweights. And so my son's uh, the coach for Columbia University. Oh, yeah. And uh, they always ask him, what was with them heavyweights from Minnesota? Because my son was a heavyweight at Minnesota, but he ended up being behind Tony Nelson and 
and the national champs, so he cut down to 198 and didn't do, you know, I mean, he just, he, he was, my son was a really good high school wrestler, uh -huh. one state twice, but he wasn't a great division one wrestler, but he, he is a hell of a good coach for yeah. Columbia. Yeah. And people love him. He's just, he's just likable. And yeah. that's a lot in recruiting. You got to be like that. You yep. got to be likable. Yep. Absolutely. So, well, I know, Hey John, I'm going to, we'll let you go. Maybe we'll, we'll do another one some other time and talk a little more about something, you know, dig a little deeper into something yeah. else. And uh, it's, it's a, if, yeah, we'll talk because yeah. I'll tell you some, I'll tell you some shit. You might have to plug your ears. Off. No, man. I like hearing that. <laughs> oh man. But yeah. I'll get, I'll tell you shit. You never well, even uh, believe. Uh, yeah. See that. Me, my kid, and me, the undertaker. And it just goes on and on, but, uh, they are fun stories to tell and all this stuff. And on your show here, um, listen, it's all done out of, love you know we're yep. all we're all in this together yep. if you can't have a little fun telling these stories and if you got a tiptoe around shit you say then i don't want to be on the program <laughs> because that's right you can't call a guy a weasel or say you want to punch this guy's face in and all that um then you're not being honest <laughs> that's right yeah, so I, nah, we'll we'll definitely have you back on then, and we'll we'll tell some. Now, other listen, stories. what do you actually? What is your podcast name here? It's it's called Wrestling Nostalgia, and I, uh, yeah, it, you, yeah, it's it's a lot of it's it's mostly it's well, it's pretty much all history history based. Talk about the past that, uh, you know, I, I like just it. I just talk I just talked today just this morning to uh, to Baron von Roschke and interviewed him. And, uh, Jimmy Rashke from Nebraska. That's right. Yep. And then uh, last week I talked to uh, got uh, Demolition Barry Darso, another Minnesota boy. Oh there. my God. Yep. So yep. Yeah. Had him on. My, Love Barry was my best friend. We did some shit. Drove down to Florida <laughs> when we were kids and did some stupid shit. And, yep. But yeah, you've been around, man. I'll tell you, you're a good interviewer. Well, I thank you. I appreciate that. You're, because you're polite and and you let the guys ramble on a little bit. And, yep. Um, it seems like your questions are pretty pretty good, pretty comfortable. You know? Yeah. So well, I like it. Yeah, I just, I just, man, I, I, I always say I, I don't, I don't like calling them interviews. I like, I like the, the conversations, right? I just like to talk to you, get you guys, right. get you guys talking, telling stories, and, and have a good time. And that's that's what that's what everybody wants to hear. That's what we're here for. And you know, I don't, I don't That's care. Right. I don't care about rattling off a bunch of dates and this and that and everything else. Let's, I just want to hear, right. uh, I just want to hear some stories and, uh, let's get to, get to the meat that might make us smile. That's bit, right. You know? That's right. Yeah. And like, I like it. You did three guys from Minnesota. Good God. That was a, you had a good day today. That's right. Yeah. Good God. I talked uh, to Darso and Rashke. Yeah. Those guys are class, class, <laughs> wonderful man. A little bit different than me because I'll, say some shit about a guy and they don't yeah yeah they don't. i get that yeah i get that yeah but well, i've talked oh i've talked to i talked to several several you minnesota guys i've i've interviewed greg gagne i've uh jim brunzel uh there you go good few, god yeah a few few years ago I, I what took you so long on me i just just working my way down the list yeah okay. few few years a few years ago right before he passed i uh got the interview larry henning one of his last interviews he did yeah so and that man, that was an uh, honor, and uh, love Larry. Yep, love Larry. Yeah, you so. should have seen him in his prime. Oh, oh. I know it. I man, he I, was a mammoth. I, I mammoth. I, I'd give anything to see some footage of of, of him and uh, you know, him and Harley, and uh, oh, oh, Larry was just uh, just so unbelievably he he was as big and built as any guy. I mean, and and and. and as far as that goes, the strong guy was. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. yeah they, they didn't call him the axe for nothing, did they? <laughs> yeah. The axe is back and the axe is back to stay. <laughs> That's what always said. That's and I remember Kurt being gone from high school for a year. And I'm like, God, why did you have to move down to Arizona? Well, then they moved back. Yeah. You know, yeah, and then uh, Kurt was back, and we were up to our 
<laughs> ways again. Your shenanigans but, again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, Hagstrand went to Henry High School, which was right by Robinsville. Yeah. And one night at Robinsville McDonald's, we were, you know, acting cool and all that. And <laughs> Henry punched Hawk through the window of his car <laughs> and uh, just gave him like a short jab, right? Yeah. Hawk went crazy. Him and Norton are driving all over. They think it's me who hit him. Oh. You know? Yeah. They don't know Nord from Annie. They don't go to our school. Yeah. So they think it's that big Nord kid. I yeah, know it's him. So they came in school, Norton and Eggstrand, looking for me during <laughs> during regular class hours. <laughs> and the principal goes, Don, I'm worried. There's two guys <laughs> out there that they want to see you. I don't think they want to see you very nicely. I says, come on, bring them, bring them to me. I'll, I'll see them. I knew what it was about. Yeah. But I was ready. I was ready. And the principal kind of just shut the deal down. You yeah. Can't, but that's the kind of guys we were. I, I can't imagine working in the school back in those days, like I said, with all those, all those guys in the, around Minnesota. And oh. All. oh, God, we ought to have been. We were just mental. Yeah. We ought to have been locked up. Did, we did, were just. Did you ever do a stint as a bouncer like all these other guys? It seemed like they all worked as bouncers one time or another. <laughs> yes, I bounced. Of course I bounced. <laughs> Every, I mean, yeah, I bounced at Grandma B's and, and that infamous bar is right yeah. on the Mississippi. Yeah. It's still there. I think it's called Gabby's. But, but <laughs> And Al Blake just died. He was a Robinson. He wasn't a Robinson. He was a wrestler for sure. Yeah. Huge. And he was a bouncer. And he had, the only thing I didn't like is bouncing is when guys would be beating guys to death. Now you'd go to prison. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You could never hit guys the way we were hitting guys. And I wasn't really... I never really, I hit a guy maybe once or twice, but to be doing that with that much power and maliciousness, it's, it's a, that was just sick, but we didn't know no better. Yep. It was just dumb. You guys, but, uh, you guys must've got a handbook or something that this is what you're going to do. You're going <laughs> to, if you're from this area, you're going <laughs> to, you can raise a little hell, go, go bounce, get, get trained and <laughs> go to pro wrestling. Yeah. Get, get trained. <laughs> we knew one thing. We didn't want to work for a living. There you go. Evan. We wanted to get to wrestling and have some fun and, and keep seeing each other. That was a big thing. Was we wanted to keep seeing each other. Like we were in high school, but we had money. You yeah. know, and uh, yeah, that was great. Well, you couldn't great help time. it. Anywhere you went, you're going to find probably probably find one of you guys. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, <laughs> I don't know. It still it, it, it still comes back to uh, I still got a lot of great guys from Robinson, and I know people get sick of hearing the Robinson thing, but I'll tell you something: those were the best guys, the yeah. best years. And we were dead loyal to each other. Um, I love all of them as long as Nikita don't think he's a Russian still. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm good with Scotty Simpson. Scott was a great football player, too. Yeah. Really good. Which is easy to believe, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, he was, he was really good. But uh, um, sooner or later, you you got to quit talking Russian to your <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I got one. I'll end with this. All right. One time we were coming up there and they were, all the guys came to my house for dinner. Uh-huh. My wife yep. cooked it. Scott's at the end of the driveway and he was he's waving me to come see him. And I says, what's up, Scotty? He goes, John, only Nikita. I talk only Nikita, okay? Uh, good. I'm going, what? This, uh, what? And they got uh, so they all come in with the wife, and I'm inside my house, and as soon as Scotty walked in the door, I go, Scotty! <laughs> and his head just dropped. Like, oh, my God. I guess that didn't work. <laughs> but that, to me, is funny as hell. Yeah. And, uh, let me tell you, if Scott hears me tell these stories, he knows 
that I I love Scotty, and he was the real deal. And I just, if you can't see it, if you can't tell a guy he's not Russian when he isn't, then you got to get a new job or something. That's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, all right, John. Well, hey, th- like I said, thank, right, my friend. God thank, bless you. Bro. Yeah, thank you for your time. And like I said, I'll. We'll stay in touch, and uh, we'll we'll do this again yeah. down the road and, and chat some more. Cause hey, say a prayer for my leg, man. I it? will. And, uh, and it's ev- really a, it's a serious it's a serious deal. It is. It is. I try. I try not to think about it. But yep. Just yeah. It's just everything. But no, not to feel sorry for myself. I just uh, I appreciate it. I hope I hope anybody who's listening uh, is is doing well and in, in their lives and that they're happy and uh, blessed in this short life. You yep, know? absolutely. Yep. So, All right, bro. Yep. All right, John. Well, thank you for your time, thank and you, man. we'll talk You're again welcome. soon, buddy. All right. Thank you. Make sure you tell Carol uh, thank you. I will. I will. I will, yeah. Carol referred me. Carol referred me. You know, yeah, that's so. right. That's right. <laughs> All right, bro, All right. man. I love you, man. Uh, yeah, Thanks, you too, yeah. man. Hey, it's Bob Smith, and guess what? The Outdated Wrestling Hour is now part of the WrestleCopia Podcast Network. But hey, no fear, you're still going to hear the unique guests, comedy, music, authors, journalists, funny people. Who knows who's going to end up on the Outdated Wrestling Hour? Remember, it's all new and all old. So check it out in the WrestleCopia Podcast Network and wherever you get your podcasts. Listen if you know what's good for you. Hey everybody, Gene Jackson here inviting you to check out the Retro Wrestling Review, where each week I'm joined by some great co-hosts who help me review classic episodes of USWA Championship Wrestling, and right now we are doing week-by-week reviews of 1993. But we don't just do reviews, sometimes we get a chance to interview some of the people who were there and lived it, plus do watch-alongs. It's a lot of fun, so check out new episodes that drop every Wednesday at WrestleCopia.com. And to find links to everything associated to the podcast, you can go to uswapodcast.com. All right, and thank you to John for coming on the show and talking to me. Everybody, if you got a buck or two, go donate to his GoFundMe. Uh, John, having some health issues, uh, needs a little help, needs a little support from all of us wrestling fans. So if you could donate a few bucks, the link is in the show notes. Please go and do that. Guys, make sure you follow me on X. I'm at the Dave Dynasty. That's the best way to follow me online for all of my announcements, uh, my thoughts, my opinions, my historical posts, my pictures, my newspaper clippings, everything. X is the best way probably, so follow me there. Also, make sure you go check out all the WrestleCopia Network podcast. The shows are all great listens that shine a light on wrestling history. Lots of great hosts, lots of great topics. They're very, very fun, enjoyable listens. Make sure you look them up on your favorite podcast platforms or go to WrestleCopia.com. Also, be sure to check out my friends at the Ultimate Classic Wrestling Library for lots of great wrestling content that you cannot get anywhere else. Go to ClassicWrestling.net or you can download the Ultimate Classic Wrestling app on all of your devices. Guys, on next week's episode, I will have guest drill instructor Bob Carter. Now, that may not be a name you're familiar with, but Bob has been around, done lots of things. Worked a lot of territories, uh, really had his most prominence in Continental. Uh, but Bob has got some great stories. It was so much fun to chat with him. Uh, we talked about Mid Atlantic, the Savaldis, Stampede, Continental, much, much more. Uh, you're going to want to hear this interview, guys, because, uh, again, it may not be a name that you're familiar with, but Bob has some great stories. And this is a great slice of wrestling history to uh, bring to your attention. Thank you to all of you for listening and your support, your follows, your interactions, everything you do to help keep wrestling nostalgia rolling. I do appreciate it. Uh, Next week, again, Bob Carter coming onto the show. And until then, wherever you go and whatever you do, be good, be safe, and always keep on growing. Fans, we brought you all star championship wrestling. This is Sam Manager thanking you for being with us and saying until next time, so long, everyone.